to turn to page 197.
Let's try one. This song means a lot to me. I, you know, I say it's a lot, but I've forgotten a lot of things in my lifetime. I don't remember names very well. I don't know what I'm doing. A lot of the schooling I took, I don't know. I'll just be honest with you, I was the best student. But there's one thing I've never forgotten. It was the night I was saved. Amen. 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 At High Shoals Baptist Church. Yeah. Had a summer revival. And I was a friend that was invited to revival. So I can't say how important it is that we all witness for the Lord and, and ask people to come and tell them. You know, I've mentioned it this week that you know, when I hear the message here, you know what I want to do? I want to go tell the, my friends at work. I want to, you know what I mean? I called my brother on the way home and told him, you know what I mean, that what was going on and what was said here, what the message of the Lord this came down you. to me. And I think it's our duty as a saved by the grace of God to take that message and spread it to others. Amen. But I heard this song a long time ago, and like I said, I don't remember everything, but I can tell you the time is the name of this song. And there's one thing I can remember. I can tell you the time when I was saved. Amen. It's 170. We're going to need a lot of help for this one. So. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't what we do all the time. It, 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 it just it speaks to my heart. So let's give it a try. Yes. Yes.
Amen. Turn back a couple of pages to 438. 438. 438.
got uh, some specials here, but uh, let's turn to page 374. <laughs> I, I better say something, I guess. I'm supposed to get up here and say something, I think. Uh, it's good to be at the house of the Lord. Hey, man. Thank the Lord for the good crowd that's gathered tonight. Yeah. And I know it's pleasing in His side. And thank the Lord for all the visitors. We have a lot of visitors tonight, and we we'll thank God for you. Mm -hmm. We just remember we're all the same church. This is the Lord's house. So you be free. Yeah. You be at home in the Lord's house. And, and uh, we, we just hope and pray that everybody can do that and that the Lord will be able to do anything and everything that He needs to do in this hour of service. You know, it's not always a preacher that holds the key to the service. So uh, we need to all try our very best to do our part. The singing sounds great. Tune, I love to hear you sing. I can get a voice real good where I'm sitting. It sure is a blessing. Each one of you, you're a blessing. And uh, we thank the Lord for His Spirit that we're able to fill tonight. And let's just lift Him up. He's worthy. He deserves all of our honor and glory and praise that we can give Him. So Amen. let's just lift Him up and praise Him with all that's within us. We appreciate uh, the preacher brethren that we've had with us this week. We've got some good news. Dennis, uh, first, he first thought he wouldn't be able to be here tomorrow night, uh, but he, they canceled their church event because of weather. So he is going to get to be with us tomorrow night. So. Uh, if he was thinking this would be the last time you'd get to see him, you're going to get to see him one more night. <laughs> so, uh, we're thankful for that. But, uh, uh, remember him in prayer. He's going to come in just a few minutes to bring the message that the Lord has laid on his heart. And, uh, but let's do go to the Lord in prayer now. Ask Brother Pete if you would take us to his own prayer. Oh God, our eternal Father, oh Lord, how grateful we are to be in the house of God tonight. And God, I pray that everyone that has come together tonight has come together with a great desire to lift up the bloodstained banners of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, what a great need, Lord, that there is for revival, God. Lord, not only in our association, but throughout, God, our land and country. And Lord, I realize that revival is when God's people come together. There's a fresh new stirring of the Holy Spirit. And God, I know the Bible says, repent you therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of God. So, oh Lord, tonight, I pray, God, that you'll continue in this service, Lord, just to bless God, each and every one with a great outpouring, Lord, of your Holy Spirit. And God, I pray, Lord, that you'll take Brother Dennis tonight. And God, I pray that you'll set him in that third heaven, oh God, I pray. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you'll loose him, Lord. And God, bring a message from afar, God, that, Lord, each and every one of us need. Lord, I want you to know tonight how grateful, Lord, that we are. We realize, Lord, that when Jesus came grace and God with grace came salvation and God I'm grateful tonight that when salvation comes uh, eternal life oh God tonight how worthy you are tonight and Lord I pray God that you this Lord turn this this place upside down tonight God we need the power of the Holy Spirit Lord I love this place I love these God, I pray that you'll just bless them, Lord, with a great outpouring in your spirit. So, Lord, be with us. We love you. We praise you. And, God, we thank you for Brother Scott and, Lord, his precious wife and family. And, God, I pray that you'll bless them as they come in and out before this precious congregation, Lord, here in Shady Grove. God, we need you tonight. Lord, I pray that every stone will be turned. God, I pray if there be in our midst tonight that's lost, Lord, I pray, God, that they'll come, Lord, and be saved. God, be with us. Watch over us. Thank you again. Thank you for the honor and the privilege, Lord, when you set us free in the Spirit. So go with us, for it's in Jesus' name. We help me beg and we help me pray. Amen. 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 Mm. Page 374. I am
fact, uh, Elizabeth and Annabella. Got this.
Thank the Lord for the sweet spirit we're able to feel tonight. I appreciate church singing. It was good. I appreciate Elizabeth and Annabella. You did a wonderful job. And I appreciate Rodney and Jessica coming and singing for us. I've got some scripture that I've been reading today that uh, I believe I'll get to tonight, but I've got to share a story with you first. And let me say this tonight. I, uh, this is preaching is different every time. I've never learned how to do this. Uh, all I want to do is to obey the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And I believe tonight if we'll all obey the Lord, somebody will get saved. Yeah. And I really do. Uh, it's not His will that any should perish, but it's His will that all come to repentance. So this may seem uh, like a trivial story to you, it, but it's got a spiritual message and the Lord gave it to me. And that may be what we... We may not ever get to our scripture, I don't know, but I've got to start with this. And i got to give you a little background. Uh, during the cold months, a lot of times it's, it gets dark so early, I put puzzles together. I don't know if anybody else has that hobby or not, but uh, I probably put five or six together this winter, some of them thousand piece puzzles, some of them smaller. But about six weeks ago, uh, I was putting a puzzle together. A lot of our puzzles are animals or nature scenes, and this was a puzzle of a mule. And uh, I was working on this puzzle one night there in the bedroom, we've got a table, and I reached to put a piece up at the top, and when I brought my arm down, I felt a piece fall off. I knew I'd lost a piece, and I searched and searched and searched. I, for an hour, I searched for that piece that I had lost. And about a week ago, we started spraying our Tree. We have to put a pre-emergent around our trees, and we've got 10,000 trees, and it takes a long time. You have to spray around each one individually. And so I just wear the same clothes day after day. You wouldn't want to be around me after three or four days, but I just leave them in the garage, and I put on the same pair of pants and sweatshirt. That way they don't get mixed in with the good laundry, and then Sandra will wash them at the end. And, uh, this morning I had one more tank to spray and I got up and I put on this sweatshirt that I've been wearing for seven days and when I put it on, out fell that puzzle piece right at my feet. And uh, I picked that puzzle piece up and I walked right in there to the room and I stuck that puzzle piece right there where it went. And when I did that, the Lord spoke to me and said, that's how easy it's going to be for somebody to get saved. Amen. I want you to understand, sinner friend, if you're here, that you are more than flesh and bone. The Bible said that God is, that you are marvelously and wonderfully made. The Bible said that He breathed into you the breath of life. Your life is a lot like a puzzle piece. You know, I put puzzles together. I remember one time I put a thousand piece puzzle together, and it wasn't until I got to the very end that I realized I was missing a piece. And that's very discouraging when you when you spend that much time and you get there and there, there, there's a piece missing. But you know, tonight I want you to know that you were made in such a way that, that there's a piece of you that only Jesus Christ can feel. And for me as a little boy, and this is a play on words a little bit, but I remember the moment that my peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, went missing. Amen. I remember the moment that I came under conviction. I had grown up in church. Many of you children have grown up in church. But there's something different about it now. There's something missing that, you, that was there before. That peace that you enjoyed when you came to the house of God. That peace that you had with God. That peace is missing. And I, I, I remember exactly when that moment took place. And then I believe there are a lot of people, and I'm, I hate to say this, but I'm afraid there are a lot of people walking around in our world who are not exposed to the gospel, who do not realize uh, the need that they have in their life. Right. And I'm afraid they get to the very end of the way yeah. and, they, and they realize that they're missing the most important piece. Yeah. Jesus said this. He said, what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world Amen. and lose his own soul? Yeah. If everything in your life goes exactly as you planned, if you have a perfect life and everything seems to have fallen into place just as you would have it to, 
If you don't have Jesus, you have missed it all. That mule, you know, sometimes you can, we've had, we've had puzzles that didn't have all the pieces, and if they're over on the edge, you just take a magic marker and do your best to color it in. But this was the mule's eye. It was right left eye, right in the center of that puzzle. There was no way for that puzzle to be complete without that piece. And this morning I put on the same shirt I wore, the sweatshirt. I don't know where it came from, but it fell at my feet. And God said, that's how easy it's going to be tonight for somebody to be saved. God wants to give you that peace that you're missing in your life tonight. If you've got your Bibles, we're going to read a familiar story out of the book of 2 Kings in the 5th chapter. Very familiar. It has nothing to do with puzzles, but it's the Scripture that has been on our heart today. And we want to try to share it with you. Beginning in the first verse of the fifth chapter. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. Now we're going to read further in this chapter, but I want to stop there for just a moment. The Bible says here that uh, Naaman was, it describes several things about him. He was captain of the host of the king of Syria. He was a great man with his master. He was honorable. The Bible said it was through him that the Lord had delivered unto Syria, uh, had given deliverance unto Syria. He was a mighty man of valor. These are all traits and qualities that are very admirable. Things that we would admire in him. Uh, no doubt Naaman was a great man. But the Bible closes that first verse by saying, but he was a leper. And I want to ask you, sinner friend, tonight, do you understand your problem? Uh, Naaman did. Naaman understood leprosy is a disease that attacks a person and it shows up in their flesh. It's very obvious and noticeable. It's something that you cannot hide. But I want to be sure tonight that everyone knows their condition. Do you know what the Bible teaches us? The Bible teaches us that all of us, not just some of us, but each one of us are a sinner by nature. The Bible says in one place that I was conceived in iniquity. The Bible says in another place that I was born into sin. We all have a sinful nature. The Bible says through the disobedience of Adam, we all became sinners. Just as I have inherited many of my physical traits from my ancestors, I've also inherited that sinful nature. And, if you, and, it's, and it's evident around us. You can take the least little child, how precious and innocent they are. But you put a couple of two-year-olds together and, and ask them to share a toy, and it won't be long till you begin to see conflict and a jealousy and struggle begin to develop. That old human nature begins to show itself. And we love those little ones. They're not accountable yet before God, but they, they display those qualities, that nature, that sinful nature that we have as human beings. But I believe today that we're not only sinners by nature, but we are sinners by choice. I believe that all of us have disobeyed God. All of us at some point in our life have, and sin in its very essence is rebellion against God. That's what Adam and Eve did in the garden when they were tempted. It wasn't just that they took the fruit that God had forbidden, but they took it believing uh, that in doing so they would be as God themselves. It was man trying to rebel against his maker. And when we sin, when we choose to disobey God, uh, the Bible says that, uh, that we, we're sinners uh, by nature and by choice. The Bible says in one place, he that says he's without sin is a liar. Uh, I've sinned, I've sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says that the penalty of sin is death. Naaman had a very serious disease. There was no cure for leprosy. It was going to kill him. And in the meantime, this disease of leprosy separated him from his family and his friends. 
you read the Old Testament under the Mosaic Law, if a person had leprosy, uh, that they were to be isolated, they were to be kept away from the general population, uh, sort of like what, to some extent what we shelter in place, except uh, it was far worse. They were cast out of the community and they lived alone. And wherever they went, uh, they had to wear a covering over their face and they had to cry as they walked among the yeah. people. Unclean, unclean. Uh, so it's a warning to those around them. Uh, that leprosy is a perfect portrayal of what sin does in the heart of a human being. Uh, it makes us unclean before God. Uh, the Bible says the penalty of sin is death. Sin separates us uh, from our Creator. Naaman here had a very serious problem. Do you understand tonight of uh, the problem that you have? This is not just my problem. It's not just the problem of someone else, but this is your problem tonight. Uh, you will die in your sins unless uh, something happens in your life. Uh, listen, Naaman was going to die. But the Bible said there was a maid. And this speaks well of Naaman's character. Uh, this maid was a little girl from Israel. And in some of the battles that the Syrians had had with the Israelites, uh, he had captured this little girl and had brought her home. And she was a maid servant there in his household. Uh, she was a maid to his wife. And this little girl thought enough of Naaman uh, that she had compassion on her master. Uh, and she went to her master's wife and said, I wish uh, that Naaman was there uh, back in Israel. For there is a prophet in Israel uh, who can cure him of this disease. Uh, listen, she wanted to help Naaman. Uh, listen to Sinner friend, I want to help you uh, find Jesus. I believe every Christian in this house tonight uh, wants to help you uh, find Jesus tonight. Uh, there is a prophet in Israel uh, who can take care of that sin problem, uh, who can take away that uncleanness, uh, that can make you clean and whole tonight. Uh, this dear lady, uh, she had compassion. Listen, church.
church will prevail. Yeah. Uh, but I know it looks tough sometimes uh, for the church of the living God. Uh, but I want to tell you what tonight. Uh, if we'll hold on to the faith. Uh, if we'll hold on to the bloodstained banner of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, there's going to be faith on the earth until the Lord comes back. Uh, there's going to be a remnant. Uh, there's going to be a few uh, still clinging uh, to the old way. Uh, listen tonight. Uh, Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church and uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, listen tonight. I'm bad to change rabbit, Sandra. I told Sandra, uh, sometimes I get off on a tangent uh, but when I can feel the Spirit, I believe God wants you. know, I said this one time. It's another tangent. Uh, you know, a lot of preachers preach. It's just a straight, uh, like a, a rifle shot. I never could hit nothing with a rifle. Uh, but you give me a shotgun and brother, I can do some damage. Oh, listen, that's how the preaching of the gospel uh, can be sometimes. Oh, you just spread it out. Oh, uh, it's bound to hit home somewhere. Oh, uh, God will have you hear uh, what He wants you to hear tonight uh, out of this message. I believe that with all my heart. Uh, I've had people come up to me and say, I appreciated that, that part of your sermon. I didn't even remember saying that part of my sermon. That was the last thing on my mind. Oh, but it was what God used for them. Yeah. We want to help you tonight. But the king of Israel couldn't help. The Bible said in the 8th verse, and it was so when Elisha the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he said to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? He said, Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Yeah. And Naaman was wroth, yeah. angry. And he went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Yeah. Are not abandoned far, far rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Naaman had an idea about how this was going to work. Listen tonight, I want you to know if you're going to be saved, it's going to be on the Lord's terms. For me as a little nine-year-old boy, if I wanted to be saved, I was going to have to leave the pew where I was sitting and make my way to an altar and pray. I knew that. I could have sat where I was all night and nothing would have happened. Uh, but the moment I took that first step as uh, Sister Jessica uh, sang about tonight, I was on my way to glory, Pete, uh, because I acted in obedience uh, to the Lord. Uh, tonight, if you're here, uh, you know, I didn't see any lies. Uh, I didn't hear any music. All I knew was that I was lost. Uh, that that old sin was down in my heart. I knew if I died in the condition I was in, uh, that I would lift my eyes in hell. And I didn't want that to happen. I wanted to be saved. Amen. And I made my way to an old altar. And I began to pray and call upon the Lord. And I've talked about that uh, this week. If that's what God bids you to do, that's what you need to do tonight. Uh, listen, uh, don't be like Naaman. Uh, Naaman was angry. He thought, well, surely I thought the man of God would come out. He didn't even come out to see me. He just sent a servant. Oh, children, I wish uh, God had sent an angel tonight uh, to preach to you. Uh, surely you would hear the voice of an angel. Uh, surely you would bow uh, the presence of one uh, that was glorified uh, as an angel would be. Uh, but the Bible says it's through the foolishness of preaching uh, that God will save uh, those who believe. Amen. I'm sorry all you got is me tonight. Uh, you just got an old sinner uh, saved by the grace of God who's got a little message down in his heart uh, that he wants to share with you. Uh, I'm all you're going to get tonight. Uh, but if you heed the message, if you heed the wooing of the Holy Spirit, uh, down in your heart, uh, you'll get saved tonight. Right. I believe that. I told Sandra when we got in the car, I said, I believe somebody is going to get saved tonight. Uh, come believing that, church. I uh, believe that if we obey Him tonight and do that to the Lord, would have us too. The name was angry. He said, This is not at all the way I thought it would be. I thought it would be different than this. Maybe you did too. I remember asking Daddy. 
I didn't know. I've been in church all my life. I remember asking Daddy. I said, Daddy, how do I know when I'm lost? Some of my friends was getting saved. Daddy just looked at me. He said, son, you'll just know. I thought, what a pitiful answer that was. That wasn't at all what I was hoping for. But you know, that was the truth. That peace. I remember the moment that I lost my peace. That peace that had been in my heart, it was gone. And I was troubled. And I knew that I was a sinner. And it, that I needed to do something about it. Naaman was upset. And he said, Are not the rivers of Abad and far, far the rivers of Damascus better than this whole muddy Jordan? He was angry. He was ready to go home. But his servant came near, just as the maiden had done, and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean. Then went Naaman down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. <laughs> Naaman, this great man, a man of great pride. You know, I believe pride is probably the sin that sends more people to hell than anything else. That sin of pride. But he had a little man there in his army. He said, man, he said, Master, he loved him too. He was like a little maid. He loved Naaman. And he didn't want to see him leave in the condition he was in. I said, friend, I don't want to see you leave in the lost condition you're in tonight. And the Bible said he came to Naaman and he said, her name, and he said, Master, if they'd asked you to do something hard, would you not have done it? Would you not have done it? He said, all he wants you to do is dip in this river seven times. That's all he's asking you to do. There's nothing hard about that. I'm glad the gospel is for everyone. Jesus said, for whosoever will. It's for everyone. No one's excluded. There's no one here under the sound of my voice uh, tonight, who's, who's reached the age of accountability, who's got the intellect and the knowledge to know right from wrong. There's not a one of you tonight who cannot be saved. It doesn't require money. It doesn't require position. Uh, it doesn't require you to know a lot of things. Uh, listen, it only requires you to be obedient to the Gospel. It requires you to repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's no one here tonight who could not do that uh, if you would. Uh, Naaman, the Bible said, he heeded uh, the advice of his servant and he made his way down to that old muddy Jordan, uh, that same river where uh, one day John the Baptist would baptize the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that same river that the children of Israel had crossed uh, when they first came into the land of Canaan. Oh, that same river there as oh, they made their way to the promised land. Oh, the Bible said that oh, as he began to dip in that water oh, once and twice and three and four oh, and, that, and I don't believe there was any change until he came up that seventh time oh, when he surrendered it all to the Lord. Oh, when he gave all to Jesus. Oh, listen tonight, would you do that? Oh, would you give your heart to Christ? When he came up that seventh time, the Bible said that his skin was like the skin of a child. Those sores and those uh, oozing uh, sores and uh, those, those things that were on his skin, they were gone. His skin was perfect and it was beautiful. Uh, listen tonight. I believe Naaman began to rejoice there in the water. I believe his servant began to rejoice. I believe that little maid, when she heard about it back home, I believe she began to rejoice. Oh, what does the Bible say? Uh, the Bible says there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repented. If you come tonight and you accept Jesus and you're saved, uh, tonight I believe there'll be a host of angels uh, witness this church as she rejoices with you and what Christ has done for you. I put on my sweatshirt like I've done every day for a week. And there at my feet was that puzzle piece that I lost six weeks ago. You may have been lost for months. You may be lost for the first time tonight. But all I had to do was reach down and pick it up, walk into my study, and put it in its place. All you got to do tonight is come and receive that that Christ has for you. Let Him come into your heart. I like that passage of Scripture in the book of 
kings, I guess it is, when Solomon built the temple. You know, they did all kinds of great things. They had so many orchestras and they had so many singers and they had, they were just a magnificent thing. They sacrificed so many thousands of animals and all of that was great. And I tell you, I love all, everything about the church. I love the singing, I love the shouting, I love the preaching. I'm glad I won't have to do it one day, but I, I enjoy it when I'm in the Spirit. I like everything about the church. It's, to me, it's better than anything the world has to offer. Amen. I love the church. Amen. But I tell you what, what made that day special. The Bible said they put the Ark of the Covenant in His place. Not its place, but in His place. When we allow the Lord Jesus Christ to be in His place, brother, the glory, the Bible said the Shaddai of glory filled the house, filled the temple, and they couldn't even go inside. Oh, the glory of God filled that place. Oh, listen to God, I got saved. Oh, the glory of God filled this place. Oh, brother, it covered me up, peace. I felt it from the inside out. Oh, the glory of God came into my heart. The Bible said Moses, when he came down off the mount oh, with the Ten Commandments, the Bible said his face was so bright they had to cover it with a veil because the people couldn't stand to look upon his face. Paul said in the book, I think, of Corinthians, he said that the ministry of the, of the, of the law was so glorious and it's a ministry unto death because all the law does oh, is bring death to us because we disobey it. Oh, but he said that the ministry of the law was so glorious oh, that Moses' face had to be covered. How much more glorious is the ministry of the gospel and the ministry of salvation. I like what you prayed, Pete. I never thought about it like that. Oh, but thank God Jesus came. Oh, thank God because He brought grace. And when He brought grace, He brought salvation. And when He brought salvation, He brought eternal life. Thanks be to God tonight, church. We've got something to shout about. Amen. I want to help you. And I'm going to hush you. I want to help you tonight. I do. If there's anything I can say or do, that would help you come to Christ. I want to help you. I want to encourage you with all that's in me. Jesus loves you tonight. And you say, Preacher, I'm scared. I don't know exactly what it's going to be like. Naaman didn't either when he went down in that river. But I want to encourage you tonight. Scott made a statement up here. If we were singing one of the songs, I've never been sorry. I have never met anyone in my whole life who ever said, I am sorry that I became a Christian. Amen. I'm sorry that I went to that altar to pray. And I'm sorry that I got saved. I don't believe I ever will. No. Uh, children, I want to tell you, it's the best thing that can ever happen to you. Amen. Do you know the condition that you're in? Do you know that as a sinner, there's a peace inside of you that's missing and you need to find it and only Jesus can feel that tonight. Oh, yeah. Only He can. Bless while we stand and while we sing, I invite you to come. Bless and church, let's be the helpers. And if God bid you, don't do oh, anything yeah. apart from Him tonight. But let's be obedient, every one of us, to the will of God in this service while we stand and sing. Oh, yeah. Won't you come? Oh, yeah. Won't you come? Oh. Jesus loves you tonight. Hey. Oh, baby, there's a prophet down in his. Oh, that servant. Oh, he didn't ask anything for the Lord. Won't you come? Oh, won't you come tonight? I'll pick it up and come. That peace is there that you feed today. Oh, won't you come? Oh, won't you come? To the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God bless her soul. Lord, we pray. God, Lord, we pray.
Praise I'd rather be an old time Christian. Amen. 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 What about the left eye of a mule? There wasn't no way to color that in with a magic marker. It took, it took finding the peace. No way to get salvation. Thanks to the Lord. Amen. That's right. Amen. <laughs>
Every person here tonight had a very important part in this service. Amen. Played a vital role in this young lady being saved. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your faith. Thank you for your everything tonight. We love the Lord. He's still saving. Despite everything. Amen. He's still saving. Amen. Anybody else before we dismiss? Now, I could stay here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Any, anything before we go? What a Easter week. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Boy, have you talked about that, blood? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. What is this? Tuesday? Tuesday. We'll sing that song before the Bible's over. It was on a Tuesday. Amen. We may try to do that tomorrow night. Nothing else in any way. Scott, we got a plate outside. If they don't mind, everybody just leave a love offering on the way out. We'd love to take a plate up for a pastor this week. They made us stop you there. Let's say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 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 Thank you.